Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to SICW Wrestling Explosion. I'm Dr. Drew Avenhouse, and we appreciate you joining us here today on what is a very special occasion. It is our 250th episode. So, we're traveling back to February the 11th of 1983 to feature a match never before seen on American television. As the NWA champion at the time, the nature boy Ric Flair makes his way to the famous St. Louis Checker Dome to defend his title against the one and only Bruiser Brody. So let's turn it over to the one and only voice of St. Louis Wrestling, Mr. Larry Matisic. Weighing 243 pounds, the world heavyweight champion, Nature Boy Rick Flair. Ring announcer, Larry Matchik, to be announced. The 62nd NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Rick Flair, was announced. And the challenger. Santa Fe, New Mexico, weighing 280 pounds, the one and the only King Kong Ryan. 16,765 fans at the Checker Dome in St. Louis. King Kong Brody the Challenger, referee Lee Warren. Instructions before the match begins. Two out of three falls, one hour time limit. Flair with that gaudy robe. What a sight he was coming into the ring. The gold belt. Think of the history behind that gold belt. You can trace it all the way back to 1900. People like Frank Gotch and George Hackenschmidt through Strangler Lewis and to Luthez, certainly. Whipper Billy Watson. Gene Kaniski, Wild Bill Longson, Pat O'Connor, Harley Race. And now into the match. Here again, look how his head is. Look where he is, right? Look at those shoulders. King Kong Brody struggling to keep the shoulders up as Lee Warren's right in there. And Flair hoping he can catch a lucky break. You never know when lightning will strike. Rick Flair leaning into Brody. Brody struggling to come up. A real test. A test of more than just physical skill. It's a test of... Who wants it? Who's got the most guts? King Kong Brody or Ric Flair? Flair staying on top of him. He's probably hooked the arm on the far side now. Yes, he has a little bit. But Brody so strong, trying to come up. The fans intent. They've not often seen King Kong Brody wrestle to the mat like Ric Flair just did. Brody trying to fight back. Flair pounding on the back. Brody pounds on the stomach. Chop again to the throat. Ric Flair, side headlock, off the ropes comes Brody, flying tackle levels the world champion, over the top, leapfrog by the world champion, hip toss and down goes Brody, Ric Flair backing up, coming for the elbow drop and he misses as Brody rolls away, just when it looked like Flair had something going, Brody bounces back, avoids the flying elbow drop and vicious, vicious kicks to the head by King Kong Brody, Brody another boot right to the head. You think that there are cobwebs in Ric Flair's head right now, Brody going up on the ropes so he can come down and assault the world heavyweight champion. Big chop right to the top of the noggin and Flair goes down. Flair in trouble here. He opened up the attack and now he's paying the price. He opened it up. He opened up the offense and it's Brody coming back. Oh, big forearm smash. Look at Lee Warren point. That was the forearm. Worse than the fist. That big forearm bone to the cheek. But Flair, he never quits. We all know that. Flying tackle, it doesn't work. Brody levels him. He was leaning forward so he caught him with the shoulder. Flair tries again. Walks right into it. Walks right into it. A big body slam by King Kong Brody. Oh, he lines him up. Flair, look out below. The giant flying knee drop. Flair crushed to the mat by King Kong Brody. The crowd standing. They sense it. Count of one, two, three. There's the first fall. The first fall belonging to King Kong Brody. The crowd standing, screaming. Will they see the title change hands tonight? On February the 11th, 1983 at the Checker Dome, will the title change hands tonight? Will King Kong Brody become the champion? With the 
All right, folks, we're back on Wrestling Explosion. In this contest for the NWA heavyweight title, Bruiser Brody leads one to nothing after hitting his patented flying knee drop for the pinfall. Let's join fall number two in progress. It's hard to hear each other. Even if the guys right there say his foot was on the ropes and Brody's probably saying, what, what? Brody pounds Flair to the corner. It looks like the tide has turned a little bit. Brody more in charge now, but Flair fighting back with a boot. Ooh, and it knocks Brody through the ropes and onto the floor. Lee Warren beginning the 20 count. It's 10 on the apron, 20 on the floor. Brody on the floor of the checker dome. Coming back in, Flair right there to greet him. And it's not a friendly greeting. Going for the suplex. Going for the suplex on King Kong Brody again. Brody blocks the suplex. Once more, Flair foiled as he tries to use the suplex on King Kong Brody. And that would have been devastating if he could have done it there. Whoa, he misses a punch. And Brody fights back. Brody furiously pounding on Ric Flair. Brody on Flair. Flair staggered. Throws a wild punch. Both men back off a bit. And then a kick from Brody pushes Flair back into the corner. Not pretty, it's not pretty, it's vicious. It's sometimes crude, always rough, but it's vicious because the World Heavyweight Championship is at stake. King Kong Brody twisting the face of Flair as he mounted the rope so he could pound on Flair. Brody stumbled down, Flair may have landed a chop to the stomach as Brody was up there on the ropes. Flair grabbing Brody's hair, going for the suplex, going for the suplex. Oh, he got him up. He got him up. Ric Flair finally delivered the suplex to King Kong Brody. This could be it. The falls could be even. Kind of one, two, and oh, Brody kicks free. After all the times that Ric Flair tried with that suplex and couldn't do it, finally he electrifies the Checker Dome crowd by delivering the suplex to King Kong Brody, and Brody is shaken. Brody is shaken. That was nearly the evening fall. He came within a quarter of a count of making it one fall apiece. Elbow drop by Flair, trying for the pin. Count of two, count of, and Brody kicks out a three for the World Heavyweight Championship. Both men starting to feel the effects of this match now. We're nearly at 40 minutes into the match. Think of the energy. Think of the conditioning that's being tested here between Flair and Brody. Flair getting right on top of him. Flair's had his best success when he stayed on top of him and Brody couldn't use his longer arms and his longer legs and couldn't unleash all of his violence onto Ric Flair. Brody pushed into the corner by Flair. Flair strangling Brody. Making no bones about it, he's willing to work the count of five before disqualification. He breaks at four. Five would be a disqualification. Lee Warren and Ric Flair toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nose to nose. Flair on top of Brody. Grabbing him by the throat again. He's going to work that count as far as he can. Warren trying to break him up because now Brody's strangling Flair. Both men strangling each other. You talk about going for everything you can. Oh, hang him high. Hang him high by King Kong. Brody shades a big Bill Miller right there as he lifted Flair by the throat and flung him across the ring like a sack of potatoes. Flair made the mistake of going into the power matchup with Brody, and that never worked. Big forearm smashes right onto the chest of Flair. Quick try for a pin by Brody, but Flair, hey, he was down for two. You never know. You never know. Flair trying to come to his feet, frustrated, surely at this point, because when he got that suplex, he had to think, oh, this is it. I have Brody going for the pile driver. Brody looking for the pile driver. Flair trying to scoot to the ropes and get away. Oh, yes, Flair knew one thing he didn't want there was to have his head driven into that checkered old mat. That could have been curtains for Ric Flair and his reign as world heavyweight champion. Again, toe to toe, Flair and Brody, Flair and Brody. Brody pushing Flair towards the ropes. Trying to use his power on him, whipping him across the ring. Oh, Flair nearly catapulted over the top rope. Hung out to dry like Monday morning's wash. Ric Flair upside down, hanging in the corner. Hanging in the corner, vulnerable for Brody. Driving both forearms right into the ribs of Ric Flair. Oh, now it's Flair. Flair in deep. 
deep trouble. Down one fall to none. He can't lose this fall. And Brody's going to try to punish Flair. And Flair is going to try to hang onto those ropes and stay in that corner. The last place Ric Flair wants to be right now is in the middle of the ring where he can't get to the ropes to break a potential count of three. Brody bringing Flair up. You can see the match taking its toll on both men now. We're well at the 40 minute mark. Elbow smash to the head of Ric Flair. Look how good of a ring general Flair is though as he tried to stay by the ropes but now Brody realized it cuts him off from the ropes and Flair is forced to back up into the middle of the ring. Not where he wanted to be. Not where Ric Flair wanted to be as Brody bangs on the head. Brody with another smash to the head of Ric Flair. Flair taking his lumps at the hands of King Kong Brody. Flair. Oh. Can he come up? And Brody's got to be thinking right now, if I could lay one more big knee, one more big knee, that gold belt's going around my waist. Flair groggy throws a wild punch and misses again. He's knocked in the corner, jumps out of the ring, just simply going for the eyes of Brody. Desperation right there by the World Heavyweight Championship, trying to keep his reign alive. Brody lifting Flair, one more big body slam, throwing him far away from his body. How many body slams has Flair taken in this match? Six, seven, eight? Think they don't take a call, the big knee drop, he misses! Brody missing the knee drop. Flair having enough attention to roll away and Brody misses the knee drop. How often did you ever see that? Brody was so good, so good at sensing when his opponent was vulnerable for that knee drop. He was wrong there. He was wrong because Ric Flair was able to pull a rabbit out of the hat and get away from the flying knee drop of King Kong Brody. Brody. Now he's the one in real trouble. How often did he miss that? And that knee has to be aching, throbbing. And then it came down and Flair goes right to the attack. Ric Flair viciously going after King Kong Brody. Brody by the ropes. He could buy some time outside the ring now. Look at him hobbling on that leg. Stretching out, trying to stretch out the cramps in the hamstring of the quadriceps. That hurt Brody as much as the guy underneath it would have been crushed. Brody, grabbed by the hair, pulled to the apron by Ric Flair. Oh, into the turnbuckle by Ric Flair. Again, Flair slamming the head into the turnbuckle. Two things have been proven here so far. Number one, Brody was able to withstand the good scientific wrestler and still hang in there. He hasn't lost a fall. He's up one fall to none, and Ric Flair has proven beyond any shadow of a doubt. He's one tough cookie. Flair standing with Brody. Flair and Brody again. Maybe the fifth or sixth time in this match. Flair and Brody toe to toe, battling it out. Neither man willing to give an inch, but it's Brody taking command with big forearms and punches. Flair leaned into the ropes. An uppercut by Brody and Flair knocked clear over the top rope and down to the floor. An uppercut by Brody. Almost that European style uppercut that Dory Funk Jr. used to use. Brody going out after Flair. Flair trips Brody. Flair and Brody outside the ring. Flair and Brody on the floor of the checker dome. A chop to the throat. Flair and Brody battling once more. Neither man willing to give an inch. Flair crawling to the apron. The referee making the count on both men. It's 20 because they're on the floor. A count of 20 on both Flair and Brody. They're up on the apron. Flair and Brody. The count's still going on. Flair lands a chap. Brody lands a punch. They're trading blows back and forth. Flair pounding on Brody. Brody ducks beneath Flair. Back drops him to get away from him. Tumbles off the apron. The referee making the count. He's calling for the bell. When did he get to 20? Obviously, when Brody was still outside the ring and Flair had been catapulted inside the ring. Let's get that official announcement as Lee Warren explains to me exactly why he did what he did. In 22 minutes and 40 seconds, at the count of 18, Ric Flair was back in the ring. But King Kong Brody was still outside at the count of 20. Therefore, Brody is counted out outside the ring, and the winner of the second fall is Rick Flair.
All right, fans, as we take a look at this match from 1983, it is tied up at one fall apiece. Bruiser Brody picking up a pinfall with his knee drop. Ric Flair narrowly avoiding defeat, making it back into the ring at the count of 19. So here we go, joining fall number three in progress. Mr. Larry Matisic, take it over. He needs this fall, and there's one way to do it. He ran towards the corner and rammed Flair right into the top turnbuckle. Flair hung on to the last second when he realized that the superior weight of Brody was pulling him towards the corner. It was almost too late to move. But he still has the advantage. Flying mare by Ric Flair. Staggers to the corner. Goes for an elbow drop that misses. The elbow drop misses by Flair. Is this Brody's opening? Flair coming up quickly though. Misses with a roundhouse. And then it's Brody trying to squeeze the head of Flair. I don't know how much Brody knew about the sleeper hold. But he knew if you squeeze a man's blood supply to his brain, you might be able to make him pass out. And basically, he's just squeezing the neck as hard as he can right there. It's brutish, it's powerful, but it's effective as Brody squeezes, squeezes, squeezes the neck of Ric Flair. And Flair goes down to one knee. Maybe he can get on top of him. Maybe he can wear him down. You look back at some of the great title matches over history, sometimes they ended on very quick pins on things that people would never have expected. Just very simple things, body press, if they could catch the right leverage and catch the right moment. Now you're looking at a match that's gone 50 minutes, well over 50 minutes they've been in that ring. Let me tell you, nobody's ready to go out dancing right now. Brody on top and trying to push the shoulders down, and Ric Flair. <laughs> so smart. Saw that rope there. Let Brody feel good about it, and then Ric Flair drops his boot on the bottom rope, and Lee Warren has to call for a break. Brody rolls away from Flair. If they respected each other before they were in the ring against each other, how much respect do you think they had for each other after they knocked heads for almost an hour? Ric Flair and King Kong Brody. Flair trying to get his win back. Brody trying to make that brain click, click, click. What can I do? What can I do to break this man? What can I do to knock him off the throne? Again, basic hard wrestling. Body slam. One more time trying to wear Flair down. Lining him up. Oh, going for the leg drop, the guillotine leg drop rather than the big knee drop. That price says something right there that Brody didn't go for the knee drop. He went for the guillotine leg drop. Flair goes for the figure four. Flair going for the figure four leg lock on King Kong Brody because he realized when Brody didn't go for the knee drop, that meant his knee was hurting. He's vulnerable and Ric Flair knew it. Flair right to the figure four leg lock. When Brody didn't go for the flying knee drop, Ric Flair, so smart. He realized that King Kong Brody's knee was vulnerable, and here's Flair with the figure four leg lock. Can he get a submission out of King Kong Brody? Can he put enough pain to make Brody lean back? Maybe let his shoulders inadvertently fall on the mat for a three count. Flair stretching, straining, trying to do everything he can to the ligaments, the meniscus, and King Kong Brody's knee, but now Brody trying to roll Flair over. Brody trying to reverse it. King Kong Brody reversing the figure four leg lock. Can he take it over? Yes. And puts the pressure on Ric Flair. The pressure on Flair is Brody. Puts all that pressure into the leg of Ric Flair before Flair pops out of the hole. And now both men, a little gimpy after the figure four leg lock, reversed and in its original position, has taken a toll on both Flair and Brody. Flair coming up on top of Brody and begins pounding, pounding, pounding on the head of King Kong Brody. Brody says, I can play that game better than any man alive. King Kong Brody on his feet, raining forearms down on the head of Flair, going for the pile driver. He couldn't get it before. Can he get the pile driver on Ric Flair this time? Yes, he's got him in the air. Look out below as Brody with the pile driver oh ramming the neck and head of flair into the mat making sure he had all the leverage in the world as he tried to knock flair's head right down into his shoulders this could be at the count of one count of two and no flair with his boot across the bottom rope Brody sees it. He knows it. It was a good call. Here he finally got that pile driver, which he tried once earlier in the match, and Flair was able to scoot to the ropes. Elbow drop. Not something you often saw from Brody, but it's desperation time now. Desperation time now, and Brody taking any chance he can. 
throwing that elbow and missing. Both men having trouble coming to their feet, trying to find a way. Flair with a chop. Arm whip, Brody to the ropes. Ducks, comes off, big boot. Right to the face of Ric Flair. Brody coming off with that signature. Big kick to the face. Another kick right to the solar plexus by Brody. Brody whipping him to the ropes. Another boot to the head. And Flair is down. Is he down for the count? Look at him fight. Look at him struggle to come back up after all that punishment from King Kong Brody. One more body slam. No, a backbreaker. A backbreaker. Shades of Gene Kaniski. The backbreaker. Beautifully delivered by Brody, not even realizing where he is right now. They're close to the ropes. Flair didn't know he was that close either, and he kicked out, not knowing he could have taken the easy way out. There's no room for error here. Flair looking maybe he could come down from the top on Brody, who came to his feet slowly, but Brody's there waiting. Brody's there waiting with Flair. Sailing through the sky inside the checker dome, it's Ric Flair. Compliments of King Kong Brody. Big forearm to the face. Brody, leery of going for that knee drop. Think back to that miss, that missed knee drop earlier and what a key part of the match that was. Brody obviously had hurt his knee and he was leery of going for the giant knee drop anymore, especially after the figure four leg lock. Flair was able to take one of the signature moves away from King Kong Brody. Brody going for the suplex on Flair. Time running out. Brody going for the suplex. He has him up in the air. Drives him down. Drives him down with the suplex. Going for the pin. Can he get there? Can he get there? No, the referee, the bell has sounded. The bell has sounded. One hour has expired as Flair and Brody went at each other. Hammer and Tong. And here it is. The one hour time limit expired with each man having won a fall. The match between King Kong Brody and Ric Flair is a draw. And Ric Flair retains the world Heavyweight title. Off the ropes comes Brody. Flying tackle levels the world champion.